Welcome to the Shift to Success podcast, everyone. I hope you're doing very, very well. And uh, today we're for a special treat as I'm joined by a client and friend, Adam Doyle. Now, Adam has joined Shift Success back in 2018, I believe. And uh, he's a serving police officer. He's going to be sharing with you his story, his wins, uh, maybe some business advice. He's built a very successful business. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for you to get inspiration from Adam, but also many lessons, I'm sure, along the way. So without any further ado, Adam Doyle. How are you doing, Adam? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I've been listening to them all. I've been looking forward to coming on. <laughs> great stuff. Great. It's good to have you. So the first question that I always like to ask, I guess, because I want to get some insight on your background and what it was like growing up. What was it like growing up for you? You know, it was you, did you go through... Uh, school was you academic was you naughty was you mischievous um, what was your family like that kind of thing yeah, I had a really good childhood to be fair um, mom and dad still together and um, both got good jobs my mom was self-employed so we was never like on our own or anything like that um, dad's got good jobs so we had plenty of nice holidays as a family uh, school I was I was always pretty good in school to be fair I've, I've enjoyed school all the way through um, I started off really clever, you know, getting the top marks. Then in high school, I did pretty well. I wouldn't say I was like the best, but I got a couple of A's, so I was happy with that. Um, and it dropped off towards A levels. I had other priorities, um, so they <laughs> they didn't work out for me. Yeah. Um, that that was it. With school really, um, but no, I enjoyed, I had a happy childhood. Um, enjoyed school and everything else. Uh, wasn't overly naughty, mischievous maybe, but that's about it. Awesome stuff, and also, so, so growing up through, um, you know, school and having a good background, which is fantastic. What kind of jobs did you have growing up? Did you have any like, uh, like paper rounds growing up or, or anything like that? Yeah, so when I was as soon as I was old enough to get a paper round, when I was twelve, I had one of those, and um, it was one of those ones, not a weekly one. We do it once on a Thursday. It was every morning and every afternoon, so it was, it was horrible for the twenty five quid you used to get at the end of the week. You had to be up at half six every morning wow. but uh, thankfully my, my dad used to help me out on Sundays when I was going around my friends and stuff like that um, and then when I was oh, when I was 16 I started working at a restaurant um, just as a waiter that's where I met my partner and uh, I worked in a bar as well like a cocktail bar on a Saturday night so I had quite a few jobs when I was younger to be fair nice um, fantastic so, so it sounds to me like you've, you've had that kind of you know, you've got to you got to work to, to earn that kind of money attitude going forward. Yeah, I, I always wanted to earn money. I was even at school, I was like selling CDs and stuff like that. So I was always I was always looking for a way to make money. I think I never had university in mind or anything like that. It was always I'm going to earn money. Yeah, um, so we hear that quite a lot with successful entrepreneurs. You know, so I, I never did that at school, right? I was always just being an idiot and doing the class clowns, clown kind of stuff. With you, you you were actually hustling at school, right? You were trading essentially in school you were making money off uh, classmates etc which i think is absolutely phenomenal yeah and no, i was always doing it uh you know when you used to get those really old games on your phone we used to download them at the back of like magazines and stuff yeah 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 somehow i managed to get loads of them and i was selling them as well so there's all sorts going on at school i was always trying to sell something it's not <laughs> like i was starving my parents did give me money to go to school <laughs> of course <laughs> amazing fantastic stuff okay and um, why the police then, or, or how did the police come about? Because obviously you've, you've gone to college. What happens after college? Um, so I, I did A levels at sixth form, mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do, do, but I took maths. Um, I took business studies, ironically. Uh, I failed them all um, first year. I just did the first year. Um, got my results. Now it was a bit embarrassing. I've seen all these results, and I was like, it's not for me. I'm, I'm going to go to college. Um, and to be honest, I'd thought about the police. I'd looked at all sorts and I thought, well, if I go and do public services, I can go down the police route. It's not A level, so I don't have to have the embarrassment of getting these results again. Um, so it's more coursework based. So I went and, and went to college to do public services with the mind of joining the police. Um, but it's a bit of excitement. I always fancy that. I was always quite outgoing. I thought that'd be a, a good career for me. Nice. And how old was you when you actually joined the police then? Um, I joined the specials first um, when I was 18. Mm -hmm. um, so as soon as I could apply 
took about a year to get in. Um, and then I joined Knott's Police when I was 20. Wow, awesome stuff. Uh, since I was an adult, really, I've been in the police. Fantastic. And, and you know, did, did you get in the police first time? Was it like a, a, a trial and error kind of thing? or I applied for Staffordshire Police originally, but they were taking on, I think it was 16 people in the recruitment. Yeah. Um, so I did the assessment centre and everything with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I weren't in the top 16 results. Mm-hmm. So I ended up on a waiting list. Mm-hmm. But I think at around that time, 2013, knots were taking on about 200. Mm-hmm. So I rang them up and said, I've passed the assessment centre. And, and then they said, yeah, come for an interview. And I just went for an interview and that was it. Wow. So it worked out quite well. I would have probably been on that staff's waiting list for a while. Mm. So I had to travel. That was the, the downfall. But um, I got in. That was the main thing at the time. Amazing. Great stuff. Fantastic. And um, so, so, how, so how old was you when you joined the police? Sorry. Um, I was 20 when I got in. 20. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So that's, that's pretty young, right? Mm-hmm. And um, how long have you been in the police now? Eight years now. Eight years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And um, what's kind of your like day to day? I mean, are you, are you in response currently or? I've always been on response. So I've, I joined on my team in Knotts and I was on response and I stayed on that team for four years. Mm. Um, and then I moved to West Mids and I'm on response there. Um, and I've stayed on that. T- to be honest, though, I used to travel 100 miles to work. Yep. It was 50 mile there, 50 mile back. Yep. Now I've got a really short commute. Yep. So I think it's more a concern of if I did move anywhere else, I'd, ha- I'd have to go back to travelling, and I really like it being on my doorstep. Yep. Um, and to be honest, since I transferred back, that's when all the business stuff started happening, so I'm not too bothered about moving around in the police. So got my focus on that really um yeah. i'm happy with what i'm doing in the, the the day job and my role there um and then the rest of my time i'm sort of developing this on in the background fantastic and i can remember you know we, we obviously know each other from knots police and i can remember yeah. you coming into a uh, custody did and... i lock up your friend or someone from school probably yeah <laughs> came from a, yeah came from not a, not a great school myself so uh, <laughs> probably and and yeah we started speaking and um, I can remember, I think I was, I was on a night shift and I was reading a book and, yeah. and you started getting, oh, you know, oh, what books that is it good? I, I'll read quite a lot. And I think we first started speaking over books and um, every time you come into custody, I recommend one. And then yeah. the next time I saw you, you was like, yep, I read it. What next? And, and it, it was fascinating how, how quickly you read and listened to these books. Um, the commute. Yeah. So you used to tell me to read something. I'd get it on Audible yeah. and I'd have it finished within a few days because of the, the commute to work and back. I'd just have Audible on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I used to sort of seek you out in custody. Like, all right, I finished that one. Where's Alex? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I love that because it's quite unique because you, you know what custody is like. People just don't speak about, you know, what we were speaking about, which was, you know, yeah. property, investments, business and stuff. And it was just a nice, refreshing chat every time we came into custody. And for you, and we'll go on to your business in a second, but... For you, you know, how important has that been for you developing your mindset whilst being a business owner now? Uh, reading is probably one of the biggest things. I mean, I, I still read loads. Um, I had, I'd been on sort of a one track mind of you have a job, everything else, and then start reading some of the books and then it gives you ideas. And then before you know it, you're in a whirlwind and there's all sorts going on. So definitely I read loads. Uh, my missus reads loads now. Um so it's, it's, it's constant, the reading. Um, definitely one of the things that's pushed me um, coming up with new ideas and things like that, 100%. Amazing, amazing stuff. So so talk to me about business. You're now the founder and uh, managing director of Accountable Marketing. Talk to me about why business. Now, you're on this career path, you're in the police, you've got in and you know, you're know you enjoying things. So, so why business? So I've always sort of dabbled in buying and selling and things like that it was always something uh, more of a hobby mm. I, I was interested I wanted it to work but they were more like hobbies I weren't fully committed um, and I didn't have any guidance or anything else so I did everything uh, honestly from even when I first joined the police I was trying to do things on the side I was drop shipping rubbish from China mm. um, buying and selling stuff from car boots and putting them on Amazon and eBay I did tried to set up a cash for clothes type thing where I was getting the clothes and then selling them on eBay. 
as I started converting VHSs to DVD. Wow. Um, I literally tried everything. Uh, probably not everything, but I, it was one of those watch a video and on YouTube and you end up trying different things, but none of them ever really stuck or went anywhere. I yeah. knew I wanted to build something, but then I was had ideas, but I didn't have the business for the ideas as uh, Andrew Priestley would say. So yeah. that, that's where I was in this cycle of trying things making a little bit of money probably wasn't even worth my time um and then failing basically but kept trying to be fair uh, but nothing really got traction until started shift success really awesome and in regards to like you know the the many ideas because i listen to this is amazing you know you tried all these different ideas before and i think you might have been an entrepreneur without even realizing like i think you know, trying all those things and failing and still going again and going again and going again. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of entrepreneurial traits here. Um, so for you, was it, was it almost like, was it to earn more money or was it to, because you just couldn't sit still or was it to keep your mind occupied? What was it for you? Why, why, why business? Why try new things? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having the, the things on the side, trying to build them. I mean, everyone likes doing the logo bit, but then I was trying to come up with different ways to make well not necessarily because I needed extra money I mean it's always nice but I just like doing it I, I want I wanted to build something um I've seen people who've got businesses and I was like oh, I'd love to do something like that but you always look at them well they've already done it but then I kept trying new things but like I say that none of them got any traction poor Debbie uh, my fiance she's literally had to put up with all sorts she's had <laughs> she's had this room filled with board games Right. like to the roof like yeah. i used to sell board games on ebay that i got from like car boots and stuff and she wow. used to help to be fair she used to humor me um, and put up with it but uh, she she used to get me up sometimes on a sunday morning and go come on i'm gonna go get some board games so, <laughs> amazing well they say that you know, involved. Behind, behind a very uh, successful man is a, is a very supportive lady That's it. <laughs> um amazing so, so accountable marketing talk to me about what me and you in a bar having a pint or a cocktail and I ask you, hey, you know, what is accountable marketing? What would you say? Uh, we create websites for people that uh, get them the results they want from their websites. That's the, the line. Amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's developed from there. And do you remember when we first spoke when I come for yep. that meeting in the hotel? I was, yep. I was in that phase of doing a bit of everything, nothing yep. working. And I was going to go down the printing route, print and design. Mm -hmm. So I used to work in that field for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but then it sort of developed as soon as I started the course. So I was doing some design work for Simon Fraser, mm -hmm. who's in the group. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, I need a website. And I was like, well, I can build a website. I built a website when I was 10, to be fair. That was the first one. Yeah. Um, it was a bit cringy. It was a adddoyle.co.uk <laughs> okay yeah. not still live yeah but, uh, that used to just have like episodes of the simpsons and stuff when we was in school and they could get past the filter because my website wasn't blocked so that that's that's what it used to be or whatever i was into at the time i'd build website a website around that um but yeah i thought i can do that for, for simon so i did that and then more people started asking me so it spiraled from there and then the design element I don't really do any of that. It's, it's all websites now. Uh, and that's what I enjoy. Fantastic. Amazing stuff. So who, who's your typical customer then? Is it startups? Is it established businesses or? <clears throat> so when I went into the process, it was going to be accountancy practices. That's who I was going to target. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out that way. Hence the name accountable marketing. I thought I was being clever with that. Yeah. Um, I have now got to accountants slash bookkeepers which which is nice I have I can say I have got those <laughs> um but it, it developed it was mainly originally shift success customers so new businesses um so I'll talk them through it they usually don't know what they want from a website because they haven't had one so it's talking them through what what they want and then what we think they should have mm. um most of them have been through shift success mm -hmm. so I know what they need or what you're telling them they should have so yeah. I can sort of steer them in the right direction so it's been quite nice I've worked with loads of people in the group and really enjoyed it I feel like I've been a part of all the journeys a little bit yeah yeah you have absolutely so what what kind of 
what makes, or first of all, why do people need a website? I mean, obviously the obvious because people can find them, but why is it important, do you think, for, for a business to have uh, a website? If you wanted any, if you had any business yeah. and you wanted to find, say, a cleaner, first thing you'd do is go on Google and type in cleaner. Um, and if you're not got a website, you're not going to show up. Um, people obviously often go, I've got a Facebook page or I've got an Instagram page, which serves their purpose, but no one goes on Facebook and searches cleaner and tries to find a cleaner. Yeah. They always go on Google and find sort of a reputable company nearby. So if you're not there now, you're not going to get found unless it's word of mouth. Yeah. Um, sort of tagging people in it. So that, that's the main reason. That, that's where all eyes are at when they're looking for services and products. So if you're not where the eyes are looking, you're not going to be found. That's the, the gist of it. And it comes to that fact, so, you know, if, you, if you're not searchable, it's like the trust elements, like, is this a legit business, that kind of thing? So yeah. it does build that, that that trust going forward, right? 100%. And I think anyone who even hears of you word of mouth, mm. it's nice for them to see something tangible. Yeah. It's not like, oh, this is John, he does bathrooms. If you go to his, bath, his, his website on his business card or they can put their link on Facebook and they can see everything you've done. Um, and it's write a bit about you or your testimonials and it's all there in one place that's easy for them to see so it's like a little hub about your business and what what you can do for people yeah absolutely and i suppose you want to be stalked right you you, you want people to stalk you want customers to stalk you before actually jumping on the phone with you 100 percent. um so what makes a good website then so what what do you think are I mean, because I've seen your websites, they're absolutely beautiful. You've done some work for us as well, which um, I'm going to highly recommend you, not only as a client, but actually because you're really good at what you do. With regards to what makes, what, what's the Adam Doyle checklist of what makes a great website? Uh, simplicity. Um, I think sometimes you can try and do too much because you want it to be brilliant, but then you actually make it worse. So when I start a website, when I speak to someone, I think, what do they want from the website? Are they trying to get someone to buy something? Are they trying to get um, sort of cert, someone to take up their service? Or do we want their details um, to try and upsell them to things later on? So you've got to have a purpose for your website. What do you want to do when they get there? So they get on there. You don't baffle them with loads of stuff. Just something simple, who you are and what you do. Um, so they know that they're in the right place. Um, you get some websites and you don't know what they're about straight yeah. away. Too vague. Yeah, so you might not get the instant, them looking around, they might just click off. Mm. Um, I always put the call to action straight away. So if you've got the eyes that you want looking at your website, get their details as quick as you can. Um, so quizzes that uh, Shift Success endorse, they're brilliant because you can ask them lots of questions. It feels like they're going to get the answer straight away because it's sort of an interactive quiz. Mm -hmm. um, but then before they get the answer, you ask them for their details. With a quiz, because they've invested three minutes of their time doing it, they're more likely to think, oh, well, I'll best type in my details now. Whereas with things like PDFs and stuff, there's not as much uptake, I find. But also when you come to make your sales call later, you're armed with lots of information, you know their problem, um, you know, so you going on that call knowing how you can fix it. Uh, best examples, the dog trainers. Mm -hmm. So you find out their dog's name, you find out what you want the dog to do, what it's not doing. So you can open up a call with, oh, how's Fred the poodle doing? You've automatically got some information about them and you can build that rapport quicker. So that, that's the main bit. I keep it simple and there's got to be a lot of flow to it. So you want them to go from the home page to the services page and then make contact, or you want them to buy your latest products. So you put that on the front. There's all depends on what they they sell and what their aim is. And we focus the website and getting them to take that action for that. Yeah. Amazing stuff. And, it, and it's, it's probably good to mention as well, just because you have a website guys does not mean you can have an influx of customers run into your website, right? We have to market and advertise. So essentially we're driving traffic to where we, they, where we want them to be. So we, then we can engage them and nurture them, and build those relationships. Um, so, so Adam, what's kind of, uh, I believe you've done some chat, you've done some charity work as well. You've, you've actually 
helped a charity uh, with their website, and that was a pretty big project, right? Yeah, so it was, it was quite early on. So I'd only had sort of small website jobs. And one of my, I told my friends at work what I was doing and they uh, tagged me in the Thin Blue Line charity. They were after a new website um, and I thought I'd have a go. I was, I think I was, uh, what's it called? I didn't, I thought it was a bit out of my league. Yep. So I put in a proposal, went for it and uh, had a chat with the guy and he was like, no, I, I'm re- I really want to work with you. Um, and it went really well. It was a really nice guy. We, we still speak, to be fair. Um, so I did his website and we, we host that for free because uh, it's a police yep. charity. Uh, so we host that for free and we do updates for him quite regular. Uh, no, that was that was really good. That was our biggest one at the time. So that's really nice to do, that was. Where do you think that... So what I like about you, Adam, is that obviously you... A lot of people, and this might be a bit of imposter syndrome, they'll go... I need to be qualified for this thing before I do it with you and with a few other of our members, myself included, we do things when we're not ready and we figure it out and we work on it despite a, you know, in quotes, uh, qualification, where does that come from in you? Like, obviously, you know, you you haven't, you didn't build uh, websites, you got 10 years old, you did, but the technology changed. What what kind of that, where's that attitude come from? Well, we've, websites i thought to myself because there's so many of these build your own websites mm. and a lot of them turn out looking fancy you, you can tell when someone's tried it themselves having a play yeah um and i knew i could do better than that yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good at computers i thought i can definitely create something that's in that league or better yeah so um i went in i wasn't charging the world but you know, when I first started, it was nice to get a customer and it was a testimonial for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I learned as I went along. I've had so many problems I've come across um, like with computers, you always do. But with yeah. websites, it's a, a different kettle of fish. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's got easier. Um, you get more confidence the more you do. Yeah. So the first one took me ages. Um, I paid someone else to help me. So I got to a problem, didn't know how to fix it, um, spoke to a chap from school who I know does it, and I paid him some money to help make it better. So I wanted it to be perfect because mm. that's going to be my sort of, this is my first website. Mm-hmm. And so I paid him for help. Uh, he told me what the problem was, and I've just learned over time. And with that, you get more confidence. Um, yeah, The more you do, the, the better you get, I suppose, and the confidence builds with it. Fantastic. I completely agree. I love it. Um, okay, so, so what? Being a cop, um, eight years, what skill sets do you believe that you've kind of um, transferred into your own business? Um, communication for me. Um, I've always been quite chatty, outgoing, um, always out and about. Um, that's what I'd say is my best skill in the, in the job. Mm. Um, it's what I'm good at. Um, and I, I enjoy sales calls. Um, when I get on Zoom with people, I chat in. So it's not really hard to sell. I, I, we have a chat, see if they like what I'm saying, and we go from there. So it's, I find it easy to talk to people. I'd say that was the, the best skill to bring over. Um, that That's probably it for, for, for mine, because the rest of it I've had to learn. You know, you don't learn any of the technical stuff I do in the police. Yeah um so it, it's all the communication side of it really and things are brought from my old jobs awesome fantastic okay and what have been some of your challenges obviously you know we'll go on to some of the wins in a second but you know business is hard work and there's ups and downs what have been some of those challenges for you building your business um overall it's been quite a nice ride i haven't had any major major issues there's been lots of times where um, I've said, right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this website. And then you start it. And you're like, this isn't as easy as it sounded when I was starting it. Yeah. Um, or it's taking a lot more work than I thought. So at the beginning, I was sort of, I didn't have all the expertise in it. So it was a lot of trial and error, yeah. um, a lot of error. So I had to get a lot of outside help in from that guy I mentioned. So that's yeah. probably my biggest challenge learning everything because mm. like i say websites come on a long way from when i was 10 yeah um and it was all totally different i've had um websites just go offline spontaneously 
and I had no idea why. <laughs> uh, it's not my fault, it turns out, but I didn't wasn't able to work out why without getting in help. So yeah. it, thankfully, in this industry, when something does go wrong, there's always someone who knows how to fix it. Sometimes you've just got to pay the the back end person. Yeah. Um, and all the support things are really good as well. The, uh, the Most of the companies I use, and products I use, they've got really good support. Mm. Um, but no big challenges, just lots of little ones. Cool. I get it. I quite get it. Okay. And, you know, based on like platforms and stuff like that, um, because loads of people, there's like, there's Wix where you can do it yourself. There's, um, we've got a Squarespace, there's WordPress. For you, like for, for any business owner thinking about going into business right now, what do you think is the staple of actually this website? It's probably what you should be looking at because it's got it's more customizable. You can do a lot more with it, et cetera, et cetera. I would use um, WordPress mm-hmm. um, because you can host it yourself. Um, you, can, you can do a lot more than the out-of-the-box thing you can get with Wix and things square space and things like that you can do a lot more with it which at the beginning might not be the most important thing in the world mm. but if you're planning on growing it there's lots of external companies that make little plugins for mm. the website to enable it to do more and um, so wordpress is really good um, and there's lots of themes already available so you can go and buy a theme and then customize it to suit your company which takes out a lot of the legwork for people um i use something called divi which mm-hmm. is a theme you you pay for but it, you can customize everything so they don't all look the same but the sort of changing colors changing boxes spacing everything like that is fully customizable so that that's what i use um i've started using some others as well just trial and error i think yeah if you learn something you end up sticking with that at the beginning i'm trying to branch out and try different ones now to see what works best but i'd say definitely with, uh, wordpress mm-hmm. um don't go for the cheapest hosting um because that it's, it's a pain to move it <laughs> that's, that's like the cheapest wi-fi in a, in a in a hmo or a property that's it. You're gonna know about it right from your tenants 100 percent. so d- get get some advice around things like hosting i'd recommend wordpress uh, and as far as sort of Builders on WordPress, something like Elementor or Divi would be what I'd suggest. Or if I was going to start one again, that I'd be using one of those. Fantastic. Um, they are sort of easy to use user face wise, but there's a lot of trial and error. Um, they're still hard to make now. Yeah. They're, they're, there's always little glitches and problems and you'll come on and go, why is my website showing like that? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's not simple. Yeah. Um, although it makes it seem very simple on the adverts, there's there's a lot more to it. And the difficulty comes, you can probably design a lovely website on Wix. Uh, and then if you switch it to mobile phone view, it mm. all shows wrong. That that's the hardest bit, getting them to look yeah. right across all the different devices, really. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in today's day and age, that's so important because most people are traveling on the go, they're on the phones, yeah. etc. So okay, cool. Um, so you've tried all these businesses when you're younger, growing up, hustling at school, and you've tried selling board games and the car boots and stuff, and none of them really took off. Obviously, you've joined Shift Success, and I'm, I'm very proud of what you achieved. But for those who are on the outside or are going to listen to this podcast episode, for those who are going to watch on YouTube or, or maybe watching the Facebook group right now, what some of you wins? What, what Share to people what's happened in your life since you've, you've started this business. So it started off pretty slow for the first couple of months but I was that was more because I couldn't build the websites quick enough because I was learning as I went um but we've we won a a small business award um beginning of at the end of last year um it was the website we got to do for the Finn Blue Lion charity we have done over 35 websites now over 35 clients wow is a really nice I I only counted that up the other day so uh, nice to see how many there are um we've we had our best month in august just gone wow and that 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 seems to be steadily growing with the the odd month that dips off Mm -hmm. and but overall the trajectory is up which is nice and i've hired debbie 
So De- Debbie is officially an employee now. So she's been learning to do edits and things like that. Uh, so she can help out. Uh, overall, we've done 27,000 revenue now. Wow. So uh, when I counted that up, I was like, oh, you know, the, 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 it's got a lot on the board games, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's, it's really good. It's, it's going well. Um, I'm amazed at how quick it's gone and how easy we're finding it now. Amazing. And how, how do you feel? Knowing, looking back and reflecting on where you were to where you are now, how, how does that make you and Debbie feel? Oh, proud. Um, before, it was always a bit of a joke that I'd tried so many different ideas. Yeah. But only like in a nice way, but uh, family and stuff, like, oh, what's he doing now? What's he doing now? And it was a bit of a joke, but it was, they were meant in a nice way. But then mm-hmm. now they're like, oh, he's actually doing something that works now. <laughs> so it, it's, it's quite nice in that sense, like, I'm doing well with uh, some I've started. So I've kept trying things. I've probably spoke about all the things I'm going to do and none of them worked. So to have one that's working is, it makes you quite proud. Amazing. Fantastic. And what's kind of one of the biggest business lessons that you've learned across the way? And that doesn't have to be from shift success, but the things that maybe you figured out or, or, or any lesson that you could help our audience listen to this. And time, time management. Mm. So because I'm on response, I work shifts, but then because of that, I don't get every weekend off. So mm-hmm. I obviously want to see my family, fiance, and all that stuff. Um, evenings, if my partner's at home, I want to see her or go out and things like that. So managing time has been the most important thing, really. Um, I'd love to be able to set up something like uh, what's it called a the schedule app where people can book an appointment with me on a Tuesday or a Thursday, that'd be perfect. But because of my shift, it doesn't work. Um, So using Google Calendar, I I block out time. When I seen it, when we were on the, is it the Ideas Day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Startup Day, they talk about it. I've used it ever since, but for both work and personal. So I'm now booked up every weekend until... Christmas because they're like when are you free and I've I've got it all there in the palm of my hand so it, it really helps you manage when you're spending time on your business when I've got evenings at home um, and obviously weekends I want to be able to do things in the day and not be working so I've, I've planned my time really well to be able to do this while still having weekends and things like that amazing because because that, that's a I think I think a thing that holds people back they think they're doing a job full time where they're going to find time to build a business, but it basically comes down to how much you want it. You know, I spoke to a um, police op- ex police officer today who has got three children. She's married. Uh, she's disabled due to a nasty incident that happened in the job. And she's just so driven, you know, no victim mentality, no excuses, just pushing forward. So, I mean, would you agree? It's, it's how bad you want it, you know, how bad you want to make it work. If, if, if you want something, you find the time. It's like everything in life, isn't it? If, uh, if you want something, you've got to, you've got to work for it and put in the effort. Um, like I said, business stuff has always been something I'd put the time into. Mm-hmm. Probably not on the right things, which is why none of them worked before this. <laughs> um, but it's something I've always spent my time doing. Um, so, But yeah, now managing it so that I can have evenings off and things like that. It, it, it works really well. That's why now Debbie's doing some work with me so that while I'm at work and she's at home, say in the six weeks holidays, she can do some of the work and we can work it like that. So we still get evenings off together when we're at home. Amazing. Amazing. What was it like working with your partner? She works while I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. She's, a, she's picked it up really quickly, to be fair. Um, I wish when I was started building websites whenever i had a little problem i could go what do you do in this case because it it took me say 20 minutes to work it out watching videos Mm. so she's managed to pick it up really quickly no go it works well it does work well amazing stuff and and kind of do you set like roles and responsibilities or is it just whatever comes in you deal with it so we use uh i use monday.com right okay um and you can so set i've got all my websites that i'm building um, what tasks I've got to do for those websites. 
Um, and it, I'll tell Debbie, can you do this one for me? And I'll write a list in within that category of all the things I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can just click Debbie and it will send over to her account. Wow. So it, it, I'm sure there's loads that work like it, but uh, I found that works quite well. Um, she's able to go in, she can see what I've assigned to her um, and then she can do it and ask any questions. So when I'm off work, at like finish at midnight, I'll go on and I'll answer whatever question she's got and then she'll know what she's doing the next time she has a go. Amazing. So it's, it's yeah, you've got, you know, you've got a system there. Yeah, yeah. System Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. So what's the, what's the vision for the company then? So obviously you're in, it's an early startup. Yeah. Um, you're making great revenue now. You've got plenty of customers, testimonials and stuff. You've obviously hired Debbie. You've got bookkeepers and accountants. What's the vision? Where do you want to go with this? Um, the reason sort of Debbie's come on board is I want to break the bottleneck. Yeah. Um, I want to be able to grow it. So say we do two, three websites a month. Mm-hmm. With Debbie on board now, we can up that. Um, so I need to start branching out with sales. I want to contact local companies um, try and build the online presence and more social media, which, mm-hmm. which was neglected because I spend all my time doing websites and sales calls, sort of content creation, things like that, flag down a little bit. So keep growing. I want to get it up to how many websites I do a month. I want that to slowly increase. And I'd, I'd love to have a sort of an office at some point with a few employees um, and build lots of websites and bigger companies. I want to be sort of, you know, you get these large companies, I want them to come to us rather than doing small companies. Although I still, I I enjoy doing small companies. Mm. Um, I think they they get more excited about what you're building. Mm -hmm. Whereas for companies that already have a website, maybe they're getting a new one they're not as excited whereas I like it when people are really yeah. looking forward to it and they've got the new brand in and you can put it all together for them yeah then to get a nice reaction which is uh which is what I like amazing amazing stuff um so with regards to um anyone looking at this and you know they've been a cop they've, or they're in the public sector NHS or whatever it may be that was their intended career path and they might be watching this thinking or, or, or maybe that are even aware that they haven't got any skill sets. They're thinking about a different life than the police. They're thinking about the pension <clears> stuff's going off there. They're thinking about the pay freezers, but they just can't get out and they maybe not don't believe in themselves. What kind of advice would you give based on your story and being a police officer, a full-time police officer and building your business on the side? What kind of, you know, what tips or advice would you share? Um, find a mentor, um, whether it be in the group or the, but- Find someone who's done well and is always doing well and work with them. Uh, what are they doing? And bounce ideas off someone. It's, it's nice to be in a positive environment where you're getting people support you, um, giving you ideas, giving you negative feedback when you need it. it it's important to be in a, an environment where you're getting that. Whereas before, it was sort of me on my own, trying things, but not really getting any communication about it other than me spouting off about it to my family or whatever Mm. so i'd say get yourself in a good environment where people are supporting you um, and read that really helped me Uh, look at things from different perspectives when you read come up with different ideas and ways of looking from things um i was i was reading the, the four hour work week yeah I got my uh, my seventeen year old cousins reading it at the minute. Yeah, and uh, she keeps telling her mom to outsource things. <laughs> <laughs> just things like, and my, now my auntie keeps saying it. Uh, yeah. So it's things you don't think of when you read some some particularly good books. Then they open things up, how you do things, and put you on the right line. Amazing. And you mentioned family there. You know, obviously, you know, being a police officer, uh, I'm sure your family are proud of that. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a great, respectable job. You know, well, did you get any like friction from actually I'm starting this new thing and uh, this is what I enjoy uh, as well as being a police officer. Did you get any friction like, oh, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that or, you know, Adam, slow down or stick with the police or anything like that? Um, I've had no friction as in that they're happy for me to start, that support me in all the stuff I do. Um, 
So no, not not overly friction. Um, some family members that really like the fact I'm in the police. Yeah. Um, they don't st- uh, sort of hold me back from doing accountable marketing, but yeah. I think they really love the police. Yeah. That, that I think they get that it's what I want to do, and yeah. I, they can see that my mind's in a different place to where they're at, and they yeah. they want me to be happy ultimately. So uh, I, I do get the support. Amazing, amazing stuff. And what makes you feel inspired or your best self, Adam? Like, you know, those days where you just feel amazing or, you know, really happy with how things are going or on those shit days where you're thinking, I just need some inspiration. What 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 pumps you up? Um, booking in regular sales calls. If, if you get a sale, it automatically makes you feel good. Even if you don't get a sale on the phone, but the call went really well. You come out feeling a little bit like, yeah, happy days. There's a, another one potentially. And uh, you, you get a bit excited about that. Um, try and have lots of breaks. I mean, it sounds daft, but like holidays, things like that, they're what I work for. I, I love holidays. Yeah. Um, so I always find when I'm on holiday at the pool, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do when I get home. Yeah. Which I don't know whether that's a good thing, but if I'm on holiday, I sit there thinking, oh, when I'm at home, I'm on this, this, and it, totally really motivates me to get stuck in when I get back um, so I try and have as many of them as I can to be honest um, I read all the time um, usually business books or that sort of thing I like uh, stories of people who've started businesses mm-hmm. so I like the shoe dog I've just finished James Dyson's new book yeah yeah um, there's loads of them I've read yeah. uh, the, the Amazon one read that yeah. not long ago there yeah. i like those yeah. stories because you're seeing someone start it from nothing seeing how it grows and it yeah. motivates you a bit more yeah yeah absolutely completely agree they're all fantastic books my one of my favorites actually is shoe dog by phil knight mm. that is uh that is a very cool book very uh great to listen to as well yeah no i really like that one yeah um so how old are you now adam uh 29 so, t- so 29 you can go back to your 18 year old self. What's some advice you'd give to that, that individual? I'd, I'd tell him to go to Nottingham and look up a guy called Alex Seary. <laughs> 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 um, uh, on, a, on a serious note, find, find mentors, people who are going to bring you up to their level. Um, like I say, when, when I was speaking to you in custody and stuff, and you give me books to read that, you were doing your thing at the time. I mean, I didn't know lots about it at the time, but you were sort of bringing me up by getting me to read all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I always thought I was on like an Alex Siri coaching program. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember once you were sitting there on a camera watch eating M&Ms <laughs> and M&Ms uh, and you went, oh, you should read The Slight Edge. And I was like, oh, what's that? And you're like, well, if you have one M&M, it's all right, but if I eat the whole pack... <laughs> I remember laughing and stuff like that. <laughs> You're like, if I have one, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing hearing this because I've obviously, I've forgot that. And hearing that back, I mean, I was, God, I was, you know, I was 20, 26, 25 there maybe. Um, so, it, it, yeah, it's fascinating to hear that. Uh, it's just really, really, really cool, actually. So, um, so get, get, get mentors like yeah. that and uh, just read as much as you can because I, I didn't start reading. Might have read Harry Potter, but that was about it, really. <laughs> yeah. um, but that that sort of got me into that doing things different mindset. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, Adam, you've got this one life to live. You've you know we only we've only got one shot at this thing. You know what do you want to be remembered for? Um, be, being a nice guy. That would be nice. I, I like to be liked as everyone does, I suppose. Uh, yeah. It's difficult because in you in the day job at the minute you're not liked, yeah. and that isn't really me. Like outside of work, I'm quite a well, I like to think likable, outgoing guy. So I, I want to be remembered as a nice guy, but also that's that's oh he he, he created a really good business. He did he did well for himself, yeah. rather than just oh he had a good job. Yeah, I'd I'd like sort of a, a legacy, if you like, in uh, in business. Did rather than just trying actually sort of created something so that that's what i'd like amazing 
Awesome stuff. And, and, you know, one of the kind of final questions that I like to ask everyone uh, for the podcast is for you personally, what does entrepreneurship mean to you? Uh, there's, there's loads of definitions they put out there, isn't there? I'd, uh, I'd, for me, it's uh, having an idea or having ideas, but taking action on them. I think that's the, the difference for me. People who act on them and make them something. Amazing. Fantastic. Adam, absolutely amazing. For those who are listening and those who might want a website, which by the way, guys, I highly recommend. Adam's done some phenomenal work for Shift Success and we're looking forward to working with him in the future. I know he's worked with many of our clients as well. Um, where can people reach out to Adam and, and find out and uh, yeah, maybe work with you? Uh, so I'm in the uh, Shift Success group. You'll mm-hmm. find me in there. Um, it's uh, www.accountablemarketing.co.uk. Um, And my email, if you want to get me directly, is adam at accountablemarketing.co.uk. Amazing stuff. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you've got value from this episode. I just want to say, Adam, from me and the team at Shift Success, how proud of uh, we are of you. You've done an absolutely phenomenal job. Um, It's inspiring to see from where you were to where you are now. And uh, I'm really excited for your future and the next chapter of your business. Um, guys, I'll be uploading this on the podcast, uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, if you've got any questions following this, you can email me alex at shiftsuccess.com and I'll be seeing you on the next episode. Cheers.